Hi, everybody. Welcome to our third video for surveys in FedCap. In our last video, we went over some of the design and customization that you can apply to a survey under the survey settings tab. Um, we're now at the end of that page, and I'm going to go ahead and click Save Changes. And this will bring me back to the online designer where I can see a full list of all of my data collection instruments. If you ever need to get back to that customization page, you can go to the online designer. And if your form is enabled as a survey, you'll have an option for survey settings here. You can go ahead and click that and change any of the customization features for the survey itself. Um, so now my survey is set up and I'm happy with it. Um, I can go ahead and distribute it. Um, so to distribute it, I will go to the left-hand side under data collection. There's an option for survey distribution tools. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. Um, and the first thing that we see is actually the public survey link. Um, and this is a simple and fast way to collect responses for your survey. Something that I wanna mention is that the public survey link is only available for the first questionnaire in your project. Um, and this is because it's you know, related to data integrity. So if a single person is filling out one or more forms, we want those records to relate to the same person. And if we had multiple surveys with multiple URLs, they wouldn't link up properly. Um, so just keep this in mind, the public URL will only work for the first survey, okay? So some things that I want to mention is that we do have an open public survey link here. So we can click this and use that link to add it to an email message or even post it online. We also have an option for a QR code and we can add this to something like a flyer and folks can scan the code with their mobile devices and it will bring you straight to the survey. We also have some link customization features. We have the ability to make it a shorter link, and we can also customize the back end of the link to something a little bit more descriptive. Um, we can also even get some embedded code. So in case we wanted to add this to, into a website, we can embed it into some HTML. So I'm going to go ahead and click public survey link so we can see what this looks like. You can see we have our title as well as the instructions right here. Um, and if I click yes, we see we have some branching logic in this uh, particular very kind of jokey questionnaire about nachos. Um, so I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, a little bit of data um, so we have something to work with. All right. And now that I've completed my response, I'm going to go ahead and submit and REDCap will save this response and I can click close survey. And that is one way where we can distribute the survey using that public public um, survey link. Another way is actually to use um, our email addresses. So we can do that under the participants list. So I go ahead and click this tab. And the first thing that I wanna do is actually add my participants in their emails. So I'll add my email address. And if I had more than one email, I would go ahead and skip a line and add that second email. Um, so as mentioned, the emails need to be one per line, just like we see here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add participants and we can see that my name appears right here. Um, and, and part two of that is to actually compose the survey invitation. So I'm gonna go ahead and click compose survey invitation. You can see my name is selected in the participants on the right hand side. Uh, REDCap is really great because you can send out the survey in batches and it'll only send out to the new folks in your participants list. So on the left hand side, we have a few options. I can have this email be sent out immediately or at a specific time in the future. I'm going to change that back to immediate. Um, we also have a, another option for sending reminders to your participants who have not responded. Um, so you have a few options right here. You can send it you know, some time point in the future. And in addition, we also have um, a number of follow-ups. So we can send reminders more than once. Um, we can actually send it up to five times. If your project is under IRB, um, you will also need to work with your IRB and they will tell you how many times you can send a reminder for a particular survey. So I'm gonna ahead and unclick this, but I did wanna mention this. Um, we also have an option to um, add a subject. So, in this case, I'll just do Nacho Craving Index Survey. Um, and then 
at the bottom, we have the actual body of the email itself. Um, so definitely spend some time in crafting your email message and tell folks a little bit about your study and why they should participate. Something that you do want to keep are these square brackets that say survey link and survey URL. RedCup will use this to pipe in a unique URL for this particular person. So make sure you have um, this content within the body of your message. So I'm going to go ahead and hit send invitation. It'll take a few seconds, but this will be sent to my email. Close. All right, so that email just came through on my email address. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this over so you can see what it looks like. And I can click this link and I'm taken to the survey. And I can go ahead and add my response. and hit submit. And now I have my survey response for that second person. If I refresh this, you can see that I have responded um, right here. Okay, so I should mention that if there's no identifying information or, or questions that can be identifying in your survey, they're actually considered anonymous when you use the survey response. Um, that is because I don't know who filled out which form um, on the back end of REDCap, um, but you can choose to include an identifier. Um, you can you know, have an identified question in your survey itself, or you can have one connected to an email. So. This is a little bit of a new feature here, and we can enable it right here. So it says participant identifier. If I enable this, um, I will be able to include an identifier. So we can see this in action. If I hit add participants, I now have a, a option here to add that identifier. So the, the sort of syntax would be email comma participant identifier. So I'll go ahead and do Fred, my colleague Fred Lapola. And then I would do comma and his identifier, and that would go with his record. And add participants. And we can see that his email has been added um, and as well as his identifier. So if I compose another survey invitation and sent this out, um, Fred would receive that email. I don't want to bother him, so I won't do that, but I did want to illustrate that this is now an option. Um, so continuing, I also want to mention that we have the survey invitation log, so it's going to be the third tab for the survey distributions tool. And if I do that view past invitations, uh, we can see that I have a log of sending this to myself, um, this participant. Um, so if you actually send it out to folks um, using the just navigate right here, using that composed survey invitations. If I send it out, I can always go back to the survey invitation log and see who I've, I've sent it out to. All right, so those are the sort of three main tabs under survey distributions tool. I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. And in the next video, I will show you some of the automated features that you can apply to surveys.